بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم أعزائي الطلبة This lecture is about the central nervous system infections and I will concentrate on the meningitis and encephalitis Central nervous system infections in general could be diffused or focal and the best example for the diffuse central nervous system infection is the meningitis which means involvement of the meninges while encephalitis it means involvement of the brain parenchyma. In many situations there will be involvement of both meninges and the brain parenchyma and this is will called meningoencephalitis. While the focal example for the central nervous system infection is the brain abscess and the clinical picture it will depend on the site and the size of the abscess. Meningitis can be defined as inflammation of the leptomeninges and can be caused by viruses, bacteria, fungi, or parasites, or others. So the meningitis could be bacterial meningitis caused by the bacteria or aseptic meningitis, which is principally caused by viruses. Other causative agents for the aseptic meningitis include the other infectious organisms like in tuberculosis, syphilis and Lyme disease or maybe due to the parameningeal infections like in the brain abscess or epidural abscess or could be due to the chemical exposures like non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or intravenous immunoglobulins or it may be due to the autoimmune disorders or many other diseases like metabolic disorders for example also can cause aseptic meningitis other causes will be the chemotherapy or radiotherapy also can cause aseptic meningitis. Etiology for the meningitis in general, viruses are the most common cause for the meningitis and about 80% of the viruses will be enteroviruses like Coxsackie viruses and ecoviruses. Other viruses can cause viral meningitis including the polioviruses, CMV and arboviruses. Herpes simplex virus is more likely to cause encephalitis rather than meningitis. The other most important causative agent for the meningitis are the bacteria. And the type of the bacteria depends on the age group. So in the neonatal period, the most common bacteria will be group B streptococci, Escherichia coli, and Listeria monocytogenes. While beyond the neonatal period, the bacteria, most common bacteria will be Streptococcus pneumoniae, Neisseria meningitidis, and Haemophilus influenzae type B. Mycobacterium tuberculosis also can cause TB meningitis in all age group, especially between the age of 6 months and 6 years. Alteration of the host defense mechanisms due to anatomical defects or immune deficiencies will increase the risk of meningitis from a less common pathogens such as Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Staphylococcus aureus, Coagulase negative Staphylococci, Salmonella species, and Listeria monocytogenes. Risk factors for the development of the meningitis. There is a host factors, environmental factors, and other factors. Host factors causing impaired immunity and will put the host in a high risk for the acquiring meningitis and this include a younger age group less than one year a defect in the complement system C5C8 have been associated with the recurrent meningococcal infections a defect in the Brobardin system have been associated with the significant risk of lethal meningococcal disease aseplenia secondary to the sickle cell disease or other diseases will make the host in a high risk for the development of the meningitis due to the encapsulated bacteria like the streptococcus pneumoniae and Haemophilus influenzae type B. T lymphocyte defects whether congenital or acquired will associated with the increased risk of the Listeria monocytogenes infections including the meningitis. Environmental factors increase the risk for the development of the meningitis include recent colonization with the pathogenic bacteria, 
living in overcrowded area, poverty, and close contact with affected individuals. Other risk factors will increase the risk of the acquiring meningitis include congenital or acquired CSF leak across the mucocutaneous barrier, such as middle ear or inner ear fistula, cranial or midline facial defect, cribriform blade, CSF leak through a rupture of the meninges due to the basal skull fracture, this is important, and to a cribriform blade or paranasal sinuses is associated with increased risk of the pneumococcal meningitis. While lumbosacral dermal sinus or meningomyelocele are associated with the staphylococcal and gram-negative enteric bacterial meningitis. CSF shunt infections increase the risk of meningitis due to staphylococci. Mode of transmission in meningitis, the most common mode of transmission is person-to-person -person contact through a respiratory tract secretions or droplets. Other mode of transmission is a hematogenous spread from a distant focus of infection or maybe direct penetrating wound. These are rare mode of transmission. The most common mode of transmission is the person-to-person -person contact through a respiratory tract secretions or droplets. Clinical manifestations of a patient with meningitis, there may be abrodromal features of infection like upper respiratory tract symptoms or GIT symptoms preceding the specific manifestation of the meningitis, which depend on the age group. In infants, usually there will be a non-specific sign and symptoms such as fever or sometimes there will be hypothermia there will be irritability, lethargy, seizures, chiral cry, and poor feeding. This is in a case of infant. While in older children, the signs of meningitis will be fever, headache, back pain, neck stiffness, alteration in the conscious level. This is important. Alteration in the conscious level from lethargy to coma, anorexia, nausea, vomiting, photophobia, skin rash, and seizures. These will be manifestations of the meningitis in older child. TB meningitis can occur from three to six months after the initial TB infection. What about the examination? If we examine a patient with meningitis, when we find a neck stiffness from a meningeal rotation, also, there may be a Kering sign positive. Brodinsky sign also will be positive. These are in children older than two years. Non-blanching rash may be present, purpuric or petechial skin rash, which is characteristic of meningococcal infections. This picture demons to demonstrate the neck stiffness. If the patient have a neck stiffness, should, so he will be, he will be, or she will be. Mm, unable to touch his chest by his chin. This is for the neck stiffness. Could be passive or could be active neck stiffness. Carrying sign in supine position, flexion of the hip joint and the knee joint, then extension of the knee joint, there will be a pain in the hamstring muscles. This is what is called a carrying sign, which is specific for the meningitis. Brodinsky sign, also in supine position. Passive flexion of the neck will cause involuntary flexion of the hip and knee. This is a Brodinsky sign. Brodinsky sign and caring sign should be done in a patient older than one year. Bulging fontanelle, if there is an open anterior fontanelle, there may be a bulging fontanelle due to the raised intracranial pressure. A positive caring sign and Brodinsky sign is highly specific for the bacterial meningitis, but absence of these signs cannot exclude meningitis. Caring sign is absent in a local causes of neck stiffness, example cervical spine diseases or raised intracranial pressure. So a caring sign is important sign for the uh, meningitis. 
absence of the signs of fever, neck stiffness, and altered mental state virtually eliminate the diagnosis of meningitis, but could be a case of meningitis without DC3, but virtually it will eliminate the diagnosis of meningitis. The patient with the meningitis could be presented with a sign of raised intracranial pressure, and this include headache, diplopia, vomiting, a bulging anterior fontanelle may be present in infants, disturbed level of consciousness, this is a very important, as I said, from lethargy to coma, focal neurological sign may be present, such as 6 cranial nerve palsy or 3rd cranial nerve palsy. There will be a cushing reflex, i.e. there will be hypertension and bradycardia, decorticated or decerebrated posturing. Babel edema is uncommon in infant and small children unless there is occlusion of the venous sinuses or there will be a subdural embyema, or there is a brain abscess. Investigation should be done for a patient with a suspected meningitis, and include, we have to take a blood sample for the CBC, there will be leukocytosis, there will be a seroactive protein is high, we have to check the blood sugar, serum electrolytes, clotting studies, and the blood group. Other investigation is the cultural sensitivity. Cultural sensitivity is a very important in a case of meningitis, especially the blood culture, which will be a positive in about 90% of the cases. Also, we may can do a throat swab culture, stool culture, midstream urine culture, and sometimes we do a urinary pneumococcal antigen, also is important. CT scan may be required if there are a sign suggestive of raised intracranial pressure to avoid coining on lumbar puncture. And the most important investigation is the CSF examination by a lumbar puncture. Lumbar puncture for the CSF examination, which include white BC count, total and differential count, CSF protein, CSF sugar, and a gram stain and cultural sensitivity for the cerebrospinal fluid. So the most important uh, test for the meningitis is the cerebrospinal fluid examination by lumbar puncture. This is the CSF findings. These are the normal. And this is for the bacterial meningitis. And this is for the viral meningitis. Normal the pressure less than 28. Leukocytes, white BC count, normally less than 5, 75% from this will be lymphocytes. Protein normally 20 to 45 milligram per deciliter. A glucose normally more than 50 or 75% of the blood glucose. In bacterial meningitis, there will be an increase in the pressure. So the pressure will be elevated. White BC count will be elevated and mainly of neutrophils. Protein also will be elevated sugar will be decreased and organism may be seen on the gram stain and recovered by culture. While in the viral meningitis, the pressure is normal or slightly elevated. White BC count also will be elevated, but not similar to that of the bacteria. It is less than that in the bacteria. And also the type of the cells will be mainly uh, lymphocytes. The protein will be slightly elevated glucose generally will be normal and may be depressed to a 40 percent in some viral diseases like in mums enteroviruses may be recovered from cerebrospinal fluid by appropriate viral cultures or by polymerase chain reaction pcr like in the herbicide simplex viruses what are the contraindications for the lumbar puncture immediate lumbar puncture sometimes we postponed the lumbar puncture and in this case we have to start empirical antibiotic therapy and the contraindication for the immediate lumbar puncture include this number one evidence of raised intracranial pressure other than the bulging anterior fontanelle such as the third cranial nerve or sixth cranial nerve palsy with a depressed level of consciousness or hypertension and bradycardia with respiratory abnormalities, i.e. a cushion reflex.
Number two, severe cardiopulmonary compromise requiring a prompt resuscitative measures for shock or in a patient in whom positioning for the lumbar puncture would further compromise the cardiopulmonary function. Number three, infection of the skin overlying the site of the lumbar puncture. And number four, thrombocytopenia, which is a relative contraindication for the lumbar puncture. So these four are contraindicated for the immediate lumbar puncture. Treatment, how to treat a patient with the meningitis? Sometimes the patient with the meningitis requires resuscitation by stabilization of the airway, breathing, and circulation. Also may require a supportive care like analgesia, antibiotics, and IV fluid. Steroid, corticosteroid are very important in the treatment of the meningitis. It will limit the production of the inflammatory mediators, which may produce additional neurologic injury. Intravenous dexamethasone of 0.15 mg per kg per dose can be given every six hours for two days. And this will cause shortening the duration of fever, lower the CSF protein and lactate levels, and also reduce the sensory neural hearing loss. About the antibiotics, umbilical antibiotics regimen outside the neonatal period include ceftriaxone plus vancomycin. Ceftriaxone 100 mg per kg per day, given once per day or divided twice. Plus vancomycin 60 mg per kg per day, divided six hourly. If patients allergic to penicillin or cephalosporin can be treated with the meropenem. 40 mg per kg per dose every 8 hours. Other alternative drugs include fluoroquinolones or chloramphenicols. So the most important combination is the ceftriaxone and vancomycin as an empirical treatment for the meningitis outside the neonatal period. If listeria monocytogenes infection is suspected as in a young infant and telophocyte defect, so ampicillin should be added to the antibiotics. If the patient is immune compromised and the gram-negative bacterial meningitis is suspected, so initial therapy might include cefepime or mirobinim. Culture and sensitivity later on will indicate the subsequent antibiotic therapy. The duration of antibiotic therapy will be about 10 to 14 days in a case of streptococcal pneumonia, 7 to 10 days for the Haemophilus influenza type B, and 5 to 7 days for Neisseria meningitidis. The CSF should be sterile within about 1 to 2 days of initiating of appropriate antibiotic therapy. Complications of the meningitis during the illness the patient might develop seizures, cerebral edema, raised intracranial pressure, cranial nerve pulses, cerebral or cerebellar herniation, DIC, SIAD, subdural effusions, and prolonged pyroxia, or neurological sequelae later on may evident in a patient who have who had uh, meningitis, and this including the hearing loss, which is the most important, about 10%, visual impairment, cerebral palsy, subdural effusion, hydrocephalus, cerebral abscess, and learning disability. So, children must have audiology and the neurological follow-up for early detection and management of the complications if evident. Prognosis of a patient with the meningitis with appropriate antibiotic therapy and supportive care. There, will, there is a reduced in the mortality rate of the bacterial meningitis after the neonatal period to less than 10%. And the highest mortality rate observed with the pneumococcal meningitis. Severe neurodevelopmental sequelae may occur in about 10 to 20%, and as many as 50% have some neurobehavioral morbidities. 
the four prognostic factors will be infant younger than six months, those with the high concentration of the bacteria or bacterial products in their CSF, seizures occurring more than four days into therapy, and coma or focal neurological signs on the presentations. These are poor prognostic factor for the meningitis. The most common neurological sequelae include, as I said, the hearing loss, about 10%. Also, there may be a mental retardation, recurrent seizures, delay in the question of language, visual impairment, and behavioral problems. A prevention, how to prevent a case of meningitis? There may be a vaccination, there is, there may, there is a vaccination and chemoprophylaxis for the prevention of the meningitis in addition to the uh, personal hygiene and isolation of the index case. For the Neisseria meningitis, chemoprophylaxis is recommended for all the close contact regardless of the age and immunization state and rifampicin about 10 mg per kg per dose every 12 hour, a maximum dose of 600 mg for two days. Alternative options include ceftriaxone, once intramuscular injection, 125 mg for children under the age of 15 years, and 250 mg for person older than 15 years, or ciprofloxacin, 500 mg orally once. This is for the Neisseria meningitis, chemoprophylaxis. What about the hemophilus influenzae type B, chemoprophylaxis? Also, we can use rifampicin. should be given to all the household contact. And this is, will give, the dose will be a rifampicin, 20 mg per kg per day, a maximum dose of a 600 mg, given a once each day for four days. This is for the hemophilus influenzae type B chemoprophylaxis. Intrabartum antibiotic, intravenous penicillin or clindamycin if the patient is allergic to the penicillin. Uh, during labor, if the mother has a high group B streptococcal positive high vaginal swab or there is a prolonged rupture of the membranes with the sign of the maternal chorioaminionitis. Immunization also may uh, prevent the development of the meningitis due to the specific microorganisms. These vaccines include the pneumococcal vaccines, hemophilus influenza type B vaccine, and BCG vaccines. Notification. Notification is a very important, but it is essential. Not um, It is essential for the case of meningitis. Any case of meningitis should be notifiable. What about the encephalitis or meningoencephalitis. As I said, encephalitis, it means inflammation of the brain parenchyma, leading to a cerebral dysfunction, and the organism can cause, microorgan can cause encephalitis by one or two mechanisms, either by direct infection of the brain parenchyma or by an immune-mediated response in the CMS. Etiology of the encephalitis, the most common cause of encephalitis, are viruses like the enteroviruses, herpes simplex virus type 1, herpes simplex virus type 2, varicella zoster virus, arboviruses, adenoviruses, HIV, mumps, rubella, rabies, and others. There's a post measles, what is called subacute sclerosing panencephalitis, SSPE, which is developed many years after the measles. Encephalitis is also maybe a result of other types of infections or due to the metabolic disorders or toxic exposure or neoblastic disorders. Clinical manifestation of encephalitis is most common in children less than four years and the BKH of incidence is about three to eight months and acute infectious encephalitis usually preceded by a prodrome of several days of non-specific symptoms such as cough, sore throat, fever, headache, abdominal pain, and followed by the characteristic symptoms of progressive lethargy, so disturbed level of consciousness, behavioral changes, and the neurological deficits. Seizures are common at the presentations. 
Children with encephalitis also may have a maculopapular rash and severe complications such as a fulminant coma, transverse myelitis, anterior horn cell disease, polio-like illnesses, or peripheral neuropathy. Investigations should be done for a patient with a suspected encephalitis are similar to that of the meningitis. So we have to take a blood sample for the CBC, glucose, serum electrolyte, culture. Lumbar puncture is also very important for the CSF examination, for the white VC, for the cells, for the protein, for the sugar, for the CSF microscopy, gram stain, culture sensitivity, PCR examination, especially in the herpes simplex virus, herpes simplex virus serology should be detected in the CSF examination, radiography like CT scan and MRI may be show the edema or focal lesions, particularly in the temporal lobes with the herpes simplex virus encephalitis. EEG show diffuse slow wave activity, usually without focal changes. Brain biopsy it is rarely, rarely done. Treatment of a patient with the encephalitis, with the exception of the herpes simplex virus and the HIV, there is no specific therapy for the viral encephalitis. And the management is supportive and they frequently require ICU admission, with al which allow aggressive therapy for the seizures of the electrolyte abnormalities, of the airway monitoring, and the protection and reduction of increased intracranial pressure. Intravenous acyclovir for a three weeks course is the treatment of choice for the herpes simplex virus. HIV infection may be treated with a combination of the antiretroviral agent. Mycoplasma pneumonia infections may be treated with the uh, erythromycin, azithromycin, or other macrolides. Complications and the prognosis of a patient with the encephalitis, the overall mortality for the infectious encephalitis is approximately 5% among survivors. Symptoms usually resolve over several days to two to three weeks, and about two-thirds of the patients recover fully before being discharged from the hospital, and the remainder show clinically significant residue, including the spasticity, weakness, ataxia, cognitive impairment, and the recurrent seizures. But most of the patients with the neurological sequelae of the infectious encephalitis at the time of hospital discharge, gradually recover some or all their function. Poor prognosis in a case of encephalitis will be found in a patient with younger than one year, children with the edema or the coma at the presentation, diseases caused by the herpes simplex virus or hysterian equine encephalitis or mycoplasma pneumonia and rabies is universally fatal. Prevention of encephalitis include vaccination like polio vaccine, measles mumps rubella vaccine, rabies is not present, uh, influenza vaccines also. There are no specific preventive measures for the herpes simplex virus encephalitis except for the cesarean section for the mothers with the active genital lesions. Ray syndrome can be prevented by avoiding the use of the aspirin or aspirin containing compound for children with a fever who have a varicella or influenza vaccines. And thank you for listening.